Welcome to another episode of Inside the Barrel, where John and I and friends uh, jump through the hoops of consultant life um, <laughs> in, uh, uh, in the ServiceNow ecosystem. So today we have Lucas with us, who's a fellow CTA, or soon to be CTA. Woo! <laughs> And uh, today we're just gonna kind of jump in and, and explore some of the release notes and some cool things. Um, you'll probably see a lot of these kind of videos out. So we're just gonna try to tackle some things that John and I and, and Lucas think are interesting and and we'll, we'll kind of go to it. Anything else, John, that you wanna talk about? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, we'll go over the things that I wanna talk about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So one thing, one thing I really like that it's called San Diego. So we're finally representing San Diego, <laughs> um, which is funny because I'm not in San Diego right now. So it's I was really, gonna say you're as far away as you could possibly yeah. get. We're we're getting close to P for Portugal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, all right, so yeah, I figured I'll I'll kind of sh share my uh, share my screen and um, so for for those that don't know, like it may be overwhelming to know where to start um, for release notes. So a lot of the times, it's really really important that you go through release notes from both the the early release and then the GA because they they do update those as time goes on. Um, and it's really important to try to get ahead of that because there's so much that ServiceNow ships every six months that it's like, you, and then there's things even in release that, that aren't always in release notes that you just find gotchas later on. So mm -hmm. it is it is definitely important so to try to, to, to get in ahead of it. So I'll yeah. kind of just, I'll just kind of go and like show someone how to like actually get to release notes. So ServiceNow has made it super simple. You can go up here, click on release notes, um, and let's do that just to kind of walk through that. And it'll bring you to a page that kind of gives you some information about San Diego at some point. <laughs> it will load while it's loading. It'll bring up a, a page. Wow, it's like taking forever. Um, that you can learn more about it. And really, the sidebar here is. Uh, yeah, is really the important part. So essentially, um, there we go. So you can click on learn about San Diego and it'll bring you to pretty much the, um, like a very similar page to here, right? And you can like click through it. And so you can click on like upgrading from whichever uh, version you're on. And if you ever take deltas, for example, um, this is a really good place to, to kind of start. Um, so some really some really good ones is um, to to kind of show is these features and changes by product and then also the combined one. So like if you really just mm -hmm. wanted like your one stop shop for like hey let me just do a quick scan of things like I normally would start with this combined one, but really when you want to get into the nitty gritty like it's the features and changes by product um, because you can. You know, here's like a link to anything that you want to to explore, but it's it's when you get into the features by product, you can then you know go by product. Some some notable ones are like you know your platform capabilities, um, your administration, industry product, the CSM, IT, ITOM, ITSM. So you can kind of dive into each individual one of those. So. That's nice. It, it's it's good that you brought up deltas because I was just thinking, man, <laughs> it is so hard. Like you know, as a consultant, you're probably usually stuck in you know work mode all the time. So you're always in a project, working, 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 and knowing the new things that are coming out, especially when you have to speak to them, <laughs> yeah. you may not have had a chance to even look into the release notes. If there's a quick way to at least get an overview. You know, that's super helpful. So uh, pro tip there, ServiceNow pro tip, check those release notes. Yeah, yeah. So so let's kind of, 
like dive into so some of the like our favorite topics so i think i'm thinking like we could try to jump into flow if we want to we want to start there or do we want to start with something like easier john <laughs> <laughs> let's do flow i i've been doing flow recently and so it's 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 something that i actually use now <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so for those that don't know, you can go to developer.servicenow.com and just sign up with an email address and you'll be able to get a free instance. You you can click on it and, you know, request an instance and it'll it'll pop up. So here's this instance that I have. And notice here we don't have their new like uh, next next framework or next experience. Um, up top because that's like a property to, to turn on. So just kind of keep that in mind that if you still see this old um, experience, it's just because we haven't turned it on. And there is there will be tons of uh, uh, videos on that, so we're not even going to cover that. <laughs> one, one interesting thing, though, is that you can, you know, if you turn it on, uh, you can do it at a global level that goes mm -hmm. for everybody. But you also have a user preference, so you can turn it off just for yourself. Which for me, I think is kind of interesting because uh, I'm not yet very familiar with that Polaris thing, so it's kind of confusing. But um, so I yeah, just, yeah. So here's here's what you're referring to is this Polaris yeah. experience. But then under user preferences, so if you're an admin, um, you can uh, essentially. I don't think it's in here, but there is a. Yeah, so then this is the one you're referring to is you can on a at a personal level you could yeah. change yeah. it to uh, to see it or not. So that's that is kind of cool. O only if you're an admin, you said. Um, I, I don't believe if I, I am personally. Right side, I think on the I hope on the right side on that configure uh, the setting thing there the um, the icon. I think I I hope you can do it through there, but I'm not sure now. Yeah, the problem is, is like Abel doesn't even have user preferences, right? So like he's not gonna like if we turn on Polaris for everyone, he's he's gonna see a completely different pop up. So so you you'd still probably need some admin to turn it off. Um, yeah. So cool. So let's let's hop into Flow and see see all the fun things. There are some properties we probably will have to turn on, but. Um, so if we were following this, we would kind of like look through these highlights. Um, so obviously we start with the new stuff. <laughs> uh, this flow diagramming view it is really interesting to me because we're essentially just bringing back workflow. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, is is that just yeah. workflow? <laughs> yeah. So let's let's see if we can we can find one. Let's see. Um, I like wonder if people clamored about that and were like, hey, I'd like to be able to see flows like workflows. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a property though. You have to enable yeah. that. Yeah, let's let's enable that property. I think it kind of like it goes in um, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's kind of like a straight line. So even if you have like branches in your flow, it doesn't really look amazing. I think because it's just like from you know, you see a straight line with all this. I think I think that's what I saw last time, but all right. So let's uh Oh, not turn it on because I need to change scope. <laughs> so, yeah, let's go to flow diagramming. All right, so they don't even let us turn it on. So, I'm going to show you guys something that you should never do. <laughs> so, we're going to click on this record because this is a private application. So, at some point, it will. We're going to export this. Don't do this at home, kids. Um, we're gonna save it. I uh, am if you're sensitive this. to ServiceNow oh. hacking, just go ahead and look away. Yeah. Put your fingers in your ears and look away. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna open this in Visual Studio Code, which you're not oh, seeing boy. on screen, and we're gonna <laughs> change this value to be true, and we're gonna save it. Uh, and now. Go I think it's funny that they put that in the release notes, but don't actually allow you to do anything with it. Yeah, I'm assuming they're going to have to change that at some point. Um, so we're just going to re-import Hotfix this. 23. <laughs> Whichever, yeah, <laughs> Hot, Hotfix 23. So, <laughs> oh, I got denied. So oh. That. No. <laughs> there, 
this used to work on the uh, the earlier version, the preview version. So I guess mm. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not able to, <laughs> to change They've it. Locked, they saw you doing it and they locked it down. Yeah, mm. they, they definitely saw. All right. Well, um, so we're not going over that one. So, so at least I'll click on this picture maybe. And I think it shows an example. So essentially what they're trying to do is make it visually easier. Um, what's nice is you can edit in here as well. So you can see your trigger, you can do some of these lookups. And I still mm -hmm. think the complexity would be a little tough. Um, so like super complex flows, you shouldn't really have them. Essentially they should be subflows and um, I think yeah. hopefully they'll expand on this to make even complex things like really, really smaller um, for viewing. Mm -hmm. So when you turn on that property, you get this little awesome view and you would then be able to click on a flow and, and see it. And so, so this one also, if um, it's interesting, uh, some of the flows, if you try to open different flows, uh, unfortunately, we don't have the, the property, but... Uh, if there is a component that is not yet part of the the, the, the the diagrammer, maybe some of the actions or something, it doesn't open. It gives you like a warning message that, oh, this one we can't really show you because whatever. <laughs> uh, and then another interesting part is that if you have like a like a NIF, like a, a NIF that has no end for whatever reason that you, you did it wrong, um, there is a message at the very bottom saying, hey, this is a broken, I think it's like broken flow or something like yeah. that, broken, yeah, logic, something like that, which is kind I, of annoying. So I, that's cool. I wonder, I, I wonder if that's why they've locked it to false, because mm -hmm. it's not complete yet. If they're, if it's missing, you know, if it's missing uh, diagram types and, and stuff like that, I, I wonder if that's why they've, they've kind of mm -hmm. kept it out yeah. of the mainstream. Yeah, I mean, you could kind of see here that they have like this supported features, right? Where they they talk about like the different types of supported features. So I'll like click on this. So like error handling isn't supported. <laughs> <laughs> but ah, uh, so it's a it's, it's a beta but, feature. <laughs> yeah, it looks. It, I mean, it, they still have a you know a month and a half right before they release. So um, mm, okay. So so yeah. And I'm just really sad my trick didn't work this time. Man, they've gotten better. <laughs> um, <laughs> They're just watching you to see what you do. They're like, oh, if he can do that, let's lock it down. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, all right, so let's. What else in Flow is is new? So based on, we have some like Flow templates. Um, so I think what that is very similar to is if you click on this. Um, Normally you can copy flow um, as like a um, as like a, a normal flow, but in, instead you can actually make them templates. And I think it's actually on subflow. Let's see. Add a pause. No, nope, I actually don't know where that is. So let's let's go. What what, what is flow templates? <laughs> I think it's um... oh, it's a studio thing. So I, I probably don't have the the plugin turned on. But so the so the the goal here, I think, what they're trying to do with this is make it for like your citizen developers to like quickly mm -hmm. be able to add a workflow or a flow to their this application. So like you could have some sort of approval, you know, template one, and you save it as a template, and then for whatever application. Um, and then it kind of pre-creates a lot of uh, a lot of things. So is it looks, is it bound to the app that you're in, or does it kind of create like a global version of it? Um, so users cannot create flow templates in the global scope. Mm. Um, okay, but so it looks like you need a, a specific role, which is kind of cool, and we would need to install some plugins. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Why didn't you install <laughs> these plugins beforehand? <laughs> it's, we'll see what happens. Because it's we're the unprofessional, yeah, yeah. professionals. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so maybe we'll we'll show this if we can. But I, I like the idea behind it, right? This idea that you can make it easier for citizen developers. I I just struggle with like how much time and effort it would take to get this set up so that it's like truly useful 
for for all of well, these. Well, so tell, explain to me why it works out so well. Like if I build an approval flow and I save it as a template, mm-hmm. well, let me rephrase that. I guess I guess I can see it because you may have other components of your app, but it seems like if you build the if you build the approval flow, why would you need another one of those? Uh, so let's, but, you know, I guess different components of that app, if you have different approval mm-hmm. scenarios, I guess it becomes useful. I'm just trying to think of situations where, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I guess I can see it work. It just approval probably isn't necessarily the best example. Maybe, so, maybe so something else is. So let's use an example. Like if we think of like financial service operations, they essentially, you're creating or CSM where you're creating a bunch of different case types. Yeah. They, they yeah. may want, you know, some sort of approval flow uh, that they don't have to like start from scratch. And so you could sure. provide a, a flow. So if this case type, you know, has used this flow or here's the starting place. Um, but I, I, I struggle with the, the cost and time balance, right? Like I just built a template and I can update this template. How long did that take me? And then versus just copying a flow and, and <laughs> isn't like isn't the idea of a subflow like uh, so you have the citizen developer working on the actual flow which is all easy you know that that's how they mm-hmm. say you know, it's very easy natural language they can just drag and drop stuff if they can't do certain things and we say okay let me get like somebody with more experience so I build a, a subflow that contains all of that and I say hey. Uh, dear technologist, use this, put into your flow, and just use it. So I'm not, I'm just kind of struggling to understand the difference here. Like, um, yeah, what's the, the difference between copy and yeah. template? So, so I think the difference here is they don't even have to use Flow Designer. So imagine a B, BSA comes into their app, right? And they're like, I want to set up a flow. Wow. They put the name approvals, right? They select, you know, mm-hmm. the, the, the input fields and this is the screen that they see ah. so they, they don't they're like essentially abstracted from flow and oh, okay. Oh, okay they now just need to fill in this information okay. now it makes sense yeah um so that's that's what i'm i'm assuming um that's the the route they're trying to go with cool. all right moving along because i didn't install plugins let's see well, let me ask you this on uh on flow designer did they add a search to the so you know on well whenever you do the pills or the the right side when you start drilling into the pills Mm -hmm. (laughs) i was doing that yesterday i'm like man you know a search would be very handy over here if i could type in the field that i want you know so yeah over there on the right side or in in the pill i wish they would add a, a search so I think they did, let me open an actual, so you're, you're referring to if we have flow logic here, I think you can search this, right? So like count, yeah. oh, but it doesn't, you have to like click on it first and then search. It's not like a universal search. Is this, I think what you're referring to, John? Well, so you can type in there does it uh well it's more of like digging in so if you had like a record if you had a the trigger was based on a record created let's say yeah and then further down you did an if but you wanted to drill into that record created to get something Mm -hmm. maybe it searches there but it does not search over on the right side yeah like i agree i think there could be some nice little search up here Mm. Um, if, if service now is looking just to be able to search everything here, yeah. <laughs> because I do find myself dragging and dragging and like, <laughs> going in and, yeah. Yeah. Yes. and this is, this is pr- this search. So I think this search is new though. This is definitely on the release notes of like, because this list is starting to get long, mm-hmm. um, they put a search up top here. So very similar to this, but in previous, this flow logic didn't have a search. Um, so that leaves us to our try catch, um, which I think is on, I'm just going to close this the one. Try, yeah. I just mentioned their try flow logic. There you go. So this one looks like if you've ever coded before, try to do something. If you, if there's any error, 
um, which it says here, which is this catch block, then go and do something. And I think this is nice because previously, if we caught an error, like it would, uh, you would just go into this error handling and it wouldn't like run anything else. <laughs> like it was very, it was very annoying to try to like build robust flows um, with error handling. So this is like, like a really nice way to, to, to do this. No, that is, that is handy. Um, and it looks like it's just pretty standard for, for that. Um, I guess this is cool. Now certain users only have access to Flower. Mm. Um, nice. You could use more things in the flow logic. I guess that's cool. So the transform functions, that's, that one's always interesting because they yeah. they won't tell you they won't tell you the details of it. <laughs> so like, did, did if, I just see that it would do SQL commands like straight SQL? So hmm. it'll always um, it, it was always gonna let's, let's do this uh, drag a pill somewhere. Yeah. Let me just short description. See that's yeah. what I'm talking about. If there was oh, a yeah. search oh, over there. <laughs> Now, now drill in. Keep going. Yeah. All right. So, so what's interesting, so there's another feature here I think Chuck talked about it is now you can actually see the whole thing. There's this like dot, dot, dot. Oh, um, yeah. It still cuts off some text. Yeah. So it's still not perfect. Um, but this is the essentially the FX or the transform button. And my guess is they've added more things here. Will yeah. they tell us? What are like all of them? I have no idea. Sanitize uh, shell and SQL. That is crazy. So they one, yeah, this is um never one thing that uh, bothers me on this one. If you actually use, for example, go to the uh, um, utilities. I think no, the the one that says like uh, yeah, get an item from array, for example. So if you use it, so uh, just give like any value. Just click there and um, add something. So yeah, anything just for now. So if you apply, you can, you know, it will highlight that there is something that you've applied it. But if you go back, because I, I was doing a Jira thing some uh, recently, and then I was like, oh, what did I put there? If you go back, it doesn't really show you what the value is there. Now it is. So the one that I currently have, this is not showing it. Like it's like, oh, it is there. It is applied, but I forgot what I put in, so I don't know exactly. So I was yeah. trying to find it, and now it's good. It's there yeah. now. This uh, this interface with this scroll here, like it doesn't really make it super easy for somebody. So no, yeah, yeah. I also don't like. There's no like order here. So like, let's say I also wanted to add some, you know, some something to this. Now, if I wanted to like change the order of this, I have to delete everything before and re-add everything. Ugh. So there's no way to like easily move these, but. Um, so the UX is still a work in progress mm. here for sure. Mm. <laughs> um, uh, and then I think they just renamed a few things. There's more re or less retention on things so that it doesn't take forever um, or doesn't store data forever. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's really most of flow um, that's changed that I could see. That's interesting. Okay. All right, who wants the next topic? What are we jumping into? Should we do the email one? I feel like that's a good yeah. one. Yeah, you know, I, I, I like it because I, I remember a project I did at one point where I had to develop the email template. Yeah. And so if they've, uh, if they've made that easier. Yeah, so if anyone has ever seen a default email uh, <laughs> from ServiceNow, It'll look like something like this. Uh, beautiful. <laughs> Ooh, that is awesome. Beautiful. Take take me back to the two thousands. <laughs> yeah. So ServiceNow <laughs> said, you know what? We're we're gonna make your life easier and provide you with a template. Um, and under notifications, so let's. What's an easy one that I can trigger again? Um, oh, I think I could just re-trigger. Re I think I could just re-trigger that one I was looking at. So if we wanted a better, 
Uh, I probably should do a task one, but this contract has been breached and I should be able to, I don't know, I want to reprocess a different one. So let's, or we'll find the incident one. There should be an incident created. Yeah. So incident. On behalf of, I think it is called something like that. Open and unassigned. I, I like that one. Yeah, it could be that, that. It's like an internal one, right? But yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter, I think. Um, there is like on behalf of, a, I think it's called. Yeah, open for. That's the one that we. Um, okay, let's let's okay. let's go to this one. Uh, client facing, uh, you know, this one. So essentially, what you can do now is they've provided a notification template. When this will load, uh, <laughs> and so the email template is normally this unsubscribe and, and preferences, and it's terrible. Um, <laughs> and I think this it's one low is bandwidth, called, Dorian, yeah, low bandwidth. Employee, employee notification template. Oh. So this one, so actually what we should do first is I should preview, uh, I should preview the notification first. So this is, well, I guess I, this is what the new one looks like. This looks really nice. Right, and this is what the old one looks like. Unsubscribe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we we agree that they've improved this uh, template. Mm -hmm. Question: um, If you open that template, because you know most of the times you're doing this for your clients, and this is kind of like, well, they're never gonna use the service now one for client facing. Yeah, uh, you want to brand their own, you know. So how hard it is to actually because if it is just a bunch of like uh, like an HTML field, or just like before, uh, they didn't make it easier to to do it. But uh, this one has a what nothing there. Ah, the email layout. So the layout is the, the what drives them. Yeah, we'll just keep drilling in <laughs> until. So seriously, in this, in this layout, right? This was already there. This email layout has been there for a while. It didn't have like an out of the box one, very nice to use, but uh -huh. it's been there for a, it's been there for a very long time now. Interesting. Yeah. So, so this looks pretty easy, right? I could change yeah. a logo here. I can, you know, put this text here. Yeah. Um, and I'd probably what I would do is clone this, right? I probably wouldn't directly do this one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just so that when an upgrade happens, you can easily compare what's changed or, or review. Yeah. Um, and it's amazing because I was doing a work for uh, doing work for another client. Um, a lot they are like law firms, and so I was building something completely different. And then we came to email notifications, and I was oh my god, now I have to ask all these templates. And the guy just told me, oh, use this layout. Uh, no, follow the layout that we have for incident. So I went to the incident notification, and I found that layout. So I just nice. kind of put it in there, created my own template, just put the email layout there. Yeah. And it was and like, oh, yeah. beautiful, you know, so, you know, that, it's quite nice. Yeah, the, the idea of using emails as like, create a layout, then the layout calls the template, and then mm -hmm. your your yeah. notification calls the template, like, yeah. is, is, is the way to go. Because you can even put mail scripts inside of layouts, right? Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, architecting yeah. emails is definitely one of those things that you want to uh, think about in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, so that was that was the easy one, and you can see more information on use email notification layout. Um, it's part of this employee experience foundation scope, um, and it even shows you like a picture if you need to show it to, to, oh, yeah. to clients yeah. for for the difference. Um, so, and this should be installed on your instance, but, um, it's, it's if employee center is installed. So that's that new free, uh, internal, um, unified portal that they're trying to, to go. So this plugin is installed with that one. Um, and, uh, this has more information on it. So cool one to, to do. Shall we jump into service catalog? Yeah, let's see what they got going there. Yeah, let's see. <clears throat> so I think the biggest one I think Chuck showed is this order guide sequence. It's it's fascinating to me about order guides because I feel for the longest time ServiceNow abandoned them. They just said like <laughs> we're, we're not going to do anything with them, and 
it kind of feels like they're making a small comeback here. And I'm not, I don't know how I feel about it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I I think what's cool from what they're trying to do with order guides and we can jump into the instance is try to use like process automation designer, our our favorite, our favorite friend, John. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Order guides like through that route. So let's see what we could do with order guides. Thank you for so looking at this release notes, it talks about sequencing and then conditional steps. Like that's really cool. So like yeah, only do yeah. certain things. Um, so let's go back to global. I think before can you know for any sort of conditioning stuff, it was so manual. Yeah. yeah. So I think they changed this now. This is called rule based. Um, I think they just changed this related list name. I don't think it was. It used to be called something else um i I can't remember exactly but let's let's kind of look at one of these so this rules look pretty similar to what they were before there was some sort of condition um uh, for this and then i guess i don't know where the where's the new hotness (laughs) (laughs) they just renamed it that's all (laughs) <laughs> no, I mean, there's got to be, there's got to be more to this. So what is, oh, I think it's only if we have tasks. Hmm. So this, this is new. Oh, it's sequence. Ah, there's a generate sequence button. Did I miss that? See, I don't have my generate sequence button. There's got to be a property. <laughs> hmm. Service now loves putting stuff behind properties. Uh, what do we think? Sequence? Sure, why not? Nope. Nope. Order. Hmm. Uh, order is gonna be order guide. Maybe order underscore guide. Oh, there. Well, yeah. So this is exclusion column inactive. No. Interesting. So maybe let's try a different order guide. Or maybe I have to create a new one and none of these old ones work. Yeah, interesting. Let's try it. So I'll just create a new one and see. New awesome one, testing. So the, it's gonna be, I, I guess I, I don't know, is it a, is if we make it a request? I don't actually see if that matters. In series. Um, um, I don't think that matters in this case. I'll just keep it order since that's the default. We'll save it. Yeah, I mean, there's, we're definitely missing something. <laughs> um, what is, um... <laughs> maybe there's a field I'm missing. Can't even remember what the. There's nothing in your sequence. Ah, uh, configure to fulfill. Order guide must contain at least one item in the rule base, which we had. And it should show that UI action. Interesting. Okay. So let's go back to our. Um, Let's go back to our order guide that we had before that actually had rules in there. So it needs at least one rule, which we have. And let's configure UI actions. And we're looking for and name contains generate. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, it's a, this plugin again, isn't it? There's, um... Oh, oh! Did I need a plugin? Oh, you're right. Another plugin. Oh my gosh. <laughs> there we go. I, I like that they're doing this plugin route, but I I would love if there was like you know how they made this like admin like landing page now to say like new features are in all of these new plugins, right? If you want them. We suggest you install X, X, X. Yes. 
All right, well, while that's loading up, so what's kind of nice is it should present us with this PAD-like screen. And then it's like, you essentially just do process automation designer for your order guide. So um, let's, hey, we got it. Thanks for, for reading, because I didn't read it. <laughs> uh, consulting pro tip, read the notes. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, notice though how I had to dive into this. So what's crazy is the, the release notes, when you click this, bring you to order guide. And this is just a standard order guide. Like I can even switch back to, to Rome for this one. Yeah. But I need to know about the, like underneath here, this this one right here. Mm -hmm. So like, like why wouldn't you just bring me to this if I click the, the release <laughs> note that says ordering guide sequencing? So activate. All right, so we'll, we'll come back to that one. Um, anything else good in here? Um, so I think it uses the new templates um, as part of a Zboot process. So yeah, it's essentially by default, they will add that template. So I would, I would actually be careful. I, this is like one thing I would look for to make sure that none of my email templates changed. <laughs> yeah. Um, if, if they're doing it as, I know they say as part of a Z-boot, but I would check that. Um, this is kind of cool. I can't click anything for it, but this pending state. So now that we essentially have an order guide that has like six things, some of these things aren't, are, haven't started yet or conditionally wouldn't. So there could be essentially, you know, something in a pending state, um, um all right so now we're good um so order guide so in theory if i refresh this page now i should see a ui action <laughs> uh, but i have to wait for this page to, to <laughs> mm. Let's see. Good old single threaded transactions. Now they made the uh, now you can go and check the property that should be there. I can now have <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if these properties are there. You, you just keep uh, clicking yeah. refresh on every tab for your PDI. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like all right, generate sequence is there. There's no new property, so it's we're we're good. Um, so if I'm on this new order guide. <clears throat> hey, what do you know, following instructions worked. Um, generate sequence. We're going to name it new hire process. Yeah, it takes you to the pad. <laughs> hey, this is, I mean, that was a pretty good experience for an admin, I would say, um, after the generate button. It's cool that they're doing a lot of behind the scenes stuff to like generate pads. I, I can, I can totally see. So here's our lanes of activities, right? And so we're kind of jumping into pad release notes too, but this idea of like when to start, like instead of firing all of them off at the same time, it looks like we can um, add a run condition here and say, I don't know. Does this have variables? I have no idea. Um, run, poof. run if something is complete, maybe. Um, hmm. Hmm. I guess I don't know which one, like what would be, do we add like more lanes and move things over? It's not really clear like if I really wanted to take advantage of this. Like what's the the right way to do it? So we can configure things, we can edit the the lane and determines when it runs. <clears throat> I 
and I, yeah, so it looks like we could add this condition. But what's interesting of a previous, okay, so yeah, so we, we should be able to, to use like a previous thing. But isn't that just under when to start though? Like you have to switch when to start to oh, with after, previous. Pre after previous. Yeah. No, it looks like it's the same thing. Well, sure, but I mean, it, now you, when you set it to after previous, you can do that and then add whatever condition you want. But yeah, but I guess like I would want. Oh, there we go. I was waiting for you had to save it. So I got after, you. Yeah. So now we have access to the previous activity, hmm. and we could you know potentially potentially say like was this generated task assigned to some group or something like that and and do some sort of logic related to that so that's sure so that's yeah. kind of cool <clears throat> yeah this gives you, a, also, gives you a little more control yeah and i think um we could even add other processes here so it's kind of like really making your order guide really powerful to like fire off things um uh that are that are not essentially rules um for generated tasks like if I wanted to send out like a specific email at this point, you could you could kind of do so. Does so. that change the uh, the user experience? Like if you're on the service portal, for example, using an order guide, does that change it? Yes. Um, so let's do it. Ooh, too many stars. Let's okay. actually. Hmm. Let's add some stuff. Are, are you talking about? I think the experience okay, change right. is this is not controlled by that pad, right? That's like so. This is still something that you still like, you have to configure, right? So they can see all the these different tabs and and then they submit it, and then yeah, you click off. Yeah. yeah, but I think the the difference is where was it? Let's go back to that release notes. Essentially, um, I think this pending state. Hmm. is is going to be the biggest difference. Um, so if I finish this process, let me just go check out. So it's going to, you know, buy all these things. These look pretty normal. Mm -hmm. Let me do check out. The, this, they're like all in that state um, where, where I think in theory, if I, if I modify that workflow a bit, it um it will it'll, it'll change some stuff so because this just fired off you know one rhythm two rhythm three four four rhythms well, i think they were yeah they were all set to immediate so they would fire them yeah. all off at the same time but if we go in you know let's just make them all oh i think i have to save and close after Save and close, because I, I don't remember which one, like how to actually trigger all of these. So we'll just make them yeah, all they, after the previous. They need to update their, uh, <laughs> their demo their data. hardware. <laughs> <laughs> iPhone 6S, okay. come on, that's way old. So now, so now we are, we're in, uh, we've, we've updated all of them. So it should look a little bit different this time now. So if we go to our order guide, try it. And I think I selected development and email account. And I think we did standard laptop and Adobe Acrobat. And I don't think we did anything on, on these. Um, so we'll check out again. And then we'll check out. Mm, yeah, that one, see? It's, so um, this one hasn't even, like, isn't even on request approval yet. Um, so I think some of them change based on, you know, when things start. I think and, we could. Yeah. If you open the request and look at the uh, um, the items on the related list, um, is that something that the state? I oh, know we can't see the state, but it should be like in um, 
on hold or something. Uh, the stage is awaiting for. Oh no, it's not even. Uh, it hasn't. Um, hasn't. So this started. is the rhythm. It's the state is uh, not started. Yeah. This is definitely um, new, right? The state not started. I, yeah, this is new. Yeah, and so let's go check our this this one. Let's see the difference between them. Oh, maybe they're all the same. Maybe I didn't. Maybe uh, we're we're just imagining see. it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they have to be approved before those different rules start up. Yeah, I guess there's more to this than uh, maybe maybe I maybe we missed the step. Maybe it's more than just generating sequence. You know, we have to like do more with this. So I don't know. I mean, this looks looks pretty much like it. So all right, uh, we should move on. <laughs> <laughs> We're we're doing great. We're doing great. Um, so I mean, I think there's some something cool here. It's very niche, though. I don't see a lot of order guides. I see a lot of requests, um, but maybe order guides are making a comeback with this to to give more flexibility on essentially PAD for your order guide. Um, and I think well, now on order guides, there's a new field that shows up: this sequencing process. So I think Chuck alluded to that, and one of them is you can now attach process definitions to order guides. So, mm. um, all right, who who wants the next one? We got uh, UI builder surveys or decision builder. What are we What are we thinking? Mm -hmm. Surveys. I mean, what what's that? What's uh what's new there? Oh yeah, Sur the new surveys. Let's, surveys let's look at those. New experience. <laughs> <laughs> um. So apparently, surveys have like drastically changed for users now. So let's go take a survey. And I think we. So this is like your normal, you know, survey. Um. Mm. And so I think on the service portal they've they've now like changed changed this experiences. So let's go. I think we need to like trigger a survey. Or let's see if survey designer changed. I'm just clicking around. Uh, so this looks pretty much the same. So let's go find someone with an active survey. So let's uh, OK, so Beth. Beth needs to take a survey. So if Beth goes to the ESC portal, you think uh, this new portal is going to have something about surveys? I hope. Yeah, I hope so. Hey, surveys. Yeah. Survey. Hmm. So this this, <laughs> this looks pretty normal. Yeah, it's normal. Um, I don't remember what the old experience was now, though. It, it looks like they've shoved it into a shaded box. <laughs> 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 um, wow. All right. Well, let's read what, more. What did they it. say was new going on with surveys? New when survey you upgrade experience. It, there's a new widget. Oh, so they added a widget. On the one page. Um, oh, do you have to? Oh, that's a notification. Okay. Yeah, that's a notification. Oh, there's a redesigned email <laughs> notification. Oh, let's go see if we can find that. Uh, I like that they've added that into the portal, though, <clears throat> the end in yeah, Oh, yeah, that part was really nice. Yeah. Because uh, I used to have to keep, like, two tabs open when I'd be, you know, in private impersonating people to test mm -hmm. things in portal. So there's a survey assigned notification. Do we think it's this one or... Yeah, sure. Look, look at it. 
Apparently, there's a scope called service portal service. Like send, it, it has the word uh, user. I think the, the the previous one is like send survey user, something like that. This is um, on the assessment. Yeah, that one, the survey user, user invite. No, the one that the previous one is the survey user invite. That okay. one. Yeah. Um, let's preview it. Mm. That looks beautiful. Yeah. It uh, <laughs> Maybe you there's should, a you should change your yeah change your so just look at the templates there, no, oh. and but, see if you if you see one that's different than unsubscribe. Yeah. Um, no, I mean go back to your list because you have the you have the templates in your list. Yeah, I was just gonna. It it may not be like on any of them. But... Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, but so if I type in survey, these just look like all of the the normal ones. Yeah. But based on the ones that are in this scope, like if I look at this application scope, um, my guess is it's supposed to be this survey because this is this looks new to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah this is um, but I don't think it is finished configuring yet so maybe this is too new to to see we may have to come back to it um there's not a plugin you need now is there yeah <laughs> i can't even click on this so like mm. there's, there's no other information about this. there's quick start tests though redesign email notifications let's, i mean oh. we'll check let's check plugins <laughs> <laughs> um, but so that's I think the, that's the new thing with San Diego is everything's a plug-in. This idea of a custom metric type, um, mm -hmm. I, I would I would need to figure out what that means or more of that. But email direction redirection property. Mm. So by default, it's changed to true, so they do go to the portal. Oh. Versus before, okay. um, there's some legacy deprecation. Ooh, old widgets for surveys. So they really redesigned that that widget at Ooh. least. I'd like um, to see what they did to that that widget. The new widget, yeah. Um, okay, so plugins. No, uh, sir, let's uh, try survey. Anything for. Hey, employee ready? No, that doesn't look right. Outlook, actionable surveys, quiz designer, <laughs> sediment yeah. analysis. Hey, that's kind of cool. Uh, so, survey management. Uh, yeah, nothing that isn't already hmm. installed. Yeah. Hmm. I think uh, I think we're going with because it's in black. They don't have anything yet. So we'd have to come back to that. But I'm excited for a new survey. Um, I, it looks like the widget is, which we saw, um, which is, I think, a new thing. And there's probably even more to, to, to dive into that one. Yeah. Uh, all right. Decision builder, anyone? Right. <laughs> so this one I already see. Uh, if I activate this, so let's go make sure it's activated. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not, so I'm glad we did. Um, what do you, you think it matters? Probably okay. need to have it. This one, because it's dependent on that one. So, yeah, so Decision Builder, some like backstory here, came out with like Flow Designer. And like the use case that they used to have is um, uh, let me see if we can go to like an old version of it. So decision tables, yeah, there we go. Decision tables in the classic UI. Oh, they don't have a picture. But essentially you would have to like create the you'd first have to create a decision table. So like imagine you're like an insurance company and you wanted to, based on how much um, 
a contract is worth, they get gold, uh, silver, or bronze. So you'd have to create a decision table to store that information. And then you'd have to have the input of those things. So like whatever those values were, and then you'd have to create the decision record. So you're essentially like three different tables to, to essentially get where you wanted to go. Um, and so in Flow Designer, it was like really, really uh, painful to, I shouldn't yeah. that. So let's, let me see if in Flow Designer, there's something new here as well. And I'll refresh that page. Um, so let's go to our auto-closed resolved cases. And this should have something about decision builder, maybe. I think there's a module for it. Just a decision. I think decision. Um, hey, we got it. We have a fancy module. Mm -hmm. And it opens in UI Builder. Wow. Oh, boy. This is like a, <laughs> a new, like a really, really new thing. That is a blank page. <laughs> it just takes a moment to load. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like they've, they have some out of the box. So all of the change policy ones are now um, new ones. Let's actually like look at one. Yeah, approval, approval policies basically inherit the, the decision table table. So um, let's create a new one. Yeah. So, oh, we don't want this app. Oh, gosh. That's fine. Um, new car insurance premium membership. Hmm. All right. So we take some input. So this is a nice experience. Let's see. Um, car value. Number. Yeah, this is nice. And then we're going to do um, income. And integer as well. And I probably should do like currency, really. But uh, FX. No, I don't know. I think it's there a like limitation for now, but yeah, that's okay. <laughs> um, and then we have some conditions. Well, this is like really cool. Let's see. Let's save this. So we got our inputs. Yeah. We got our condition. So a header. Um, trying to like think through my example here. Condition. Uh, let's say gold membership. Gold membership. Oh, what's really cool is you can tab through these, by the way. So mm. good job on accessibility. So we could take car value uh, is greater than, Oops. I can't go any further. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to click done. Oh, okay. I think we can add another, add another decision. Uh, role, like a decision pro is the, the actual, oh, yeah, now you can add the value after you. Um... But I guess my question is, I want, okay, cool. Wait, but I wanted to, I want to combine this. Interesting. So if it's greater than 200. So, ah, okay, cool. Uh, silver membership. Well, actually, I don't know. Income is greater than. Oh. I don't know if that if I'm doing this right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, result. It, it, it is a little. It is a little confusing on how, like how that works. I. <sighs> I kind of wish they would do it more like flow designer, you know, because yeah, it seems like this is a totally different mechanism on how you write your conditions versus mm -hmm. how you would do it, you know, on flow designer. So now there's like different ways of handling things when to me, I feel like they should have kept it closer, relate close, closely related. So you're more familiar, you know, you, you become familiar with it instead of having to figure out two different ways of handling logic, right? So I guess I just, I thought we could like combine these things, right? Because ideally I'd say you're in gold membership if your income is 
like your income is greater than 50 and your car value, then there would be some result. But I don't know where the result, <laughs> like where this should go. So it's, uh, I don't know, I'm just going to put it here. <laughs> and short. Uh, yeah, so then you need like some record here. Yeah, it's just like approval policies, right? You need a um, you need a record. So uh, your condition needs to. So if you're looking at, so your input could be, I don't know, you pass in the location plus something else, and you get like a like an assignment group, for example. So your result should always be a record, a reference record. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what it's here is we couldn't even create that, right? So we'd have to go outside of the system. So so we have to like go create your results table first with your records on it, then you come here, build yeah. your inputs, because I couldn't create one here. Mm. Yeah, I guess if you don't have the the table, yes, you would have to create that. And I think this is actually like car value. <laughs> and this is uh, income. Income. So, so here's where I'm thinking. If your car value is greater than 200 and your income is greater than 50, then you are a gold member, which is, which is this. And if like, mm -hmm. if it's less than. Yeah. But how do you get the case? If you have to pick an existing case already, how does that say that you're a gold member? Yeah. So essentially what you're doing is this, you're, you're going to tables and we're going to create a table called memberships and don't mind i'm already in the scope so i might as well stay in it and now we're going to create a a new field called name and that's string good update and let's go to show list. We're going super fast for you, John. So we're going to go. Oh, membership. I see. You got to yeah. have a, I, I see. It's kind of yeah. like how you can do a choice table on yeah. uh, whatchamacallits. Uh, and then it uses yeah. that list. I got gotcha. you. And so, so now I should be able to change this to membership. Yeah. Proceed. And then, oh, but I don't even have, oh, wait, I think I have to do done. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so then you're silver. Okay, so that makes more sense to me now. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So this is, I mean, this is kind of cool. And then I'm assuming in Flow Designer, we could like Flow Logic to yeah. make a decision. And we then select our this one yeah that's right and then we pass some inputs here 100 200 and so then do something if they're silver versus gold john okay yeah no that that really uh oh, that's nice it's, it brings it home on on understanding how that in you know how how that works together i get it yeah. now yeah I think my only, my, so two things, you had to create the table outside of, of, of the experience, <laughs> yeah. the result one, but also like now we're getting into a lot of custom tables just for decisions, right? So this yeah. decision needs to really be like a, like a critical thing, or you make a super generic decision table that has a, like a hundred or a thousand fields. And so are, are you, are you hinting at licensing then? Is that, yeah. is that what you're getting after? Because every every custom decision table is going to be uh, a hit on licenses. Uh, unless there's some way that you can like extend a, a decision table or something like that. Like maybe, let me look at how. Well, but you can only do so many of those too, right? Y yeah, that's true. But like, for example, the CMDB, you can extend that one because there's certain tables that are excluded from licensing. Um, so I wonder if there is like a, a decision table like that you can extend off of. Like maybe, 
maybe you can extend off of this table and they don't count it towards licensing. I, I don't actually know. No, um, I, I get I get what you're saying. It's something that, you know, as a consultant, you definitely want to be aware of. It's mm -hmm. one of those it's one of those gray areas where you push back to the client and say, hey, you know, you need to check out your your license agreement and see what you're able to do. Because, you know, some clients are big and they have lots of money and they're like, oh, we don't care. Create the tables. Yeah. And other ones are small where they're like, OK, we got to be careful about how we handle this. Yeah, I think it's like really nice if like you needed access to something here, like if you notice like on this decision you get this record like if you're storing a bunch of data about a decision like then you have access to it in your decision table so like that's the real value is it it's more than just gold and silver membership here it's like what else is on this record that i have access to now to send yeah. an email or to make another decision or more flows no um, I, I i like the concept of it i think yeah. um but like I said earlier, I, I really wish they had kind of kept with the the flow design, designer design, mm -hmm. um, and it, it would. I'd I'd also like to see, like you were mentioning before, I'd love to see that this was integrated into Flow Designer, where you could create it within Flow Designer. Mm -hmm. You you can build all that here. Yeah, they they should have been just like you click on this and it opens up this tab, right? Even sure, if it was yeah. bad, and then you like click save and it brings you back to here. <laughs> You know, like, well, but you still you still need the mechanism to create the tables and all that too, with that to be held within even on a new tab. You know, yeah, that's, that's in the new now UI stuff. I think that would be, yeah, much better experience. Yeah, and and maybe it's coming. You know, it might be on the roadmap down totally. down a few releases. Yeah, I think the good thing is, is at least this experience is a little bit better. Sure, it was a little confusing for us, but like before, it was all in the old UI, and you had to like create all of these records and like go to these tables and it was really really tough well but look look at how fast we were able to walk through it though you know mm -hmm. um when you become familiar with service now and how it works it, it it is a little easier but you know there is some guesswork when you don't know <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> little yeah. trial and error <laughs> Um, and so I think we'll, we're kind of getting close to time. So maybe we'll do this one on another time, John. And I'm assuming they'll, they'll cover a lot of UI builder. I tried to like show some things that like they wouldn't normally show in your video or in like uh, ServiceNow uh, default videos. So yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I, you, UI builder is probably an episode of its own. Yeah. You know, when, when it yeah. comes to it, there's just uh, so much there. Um, and I, and I assume they're just going to keep maturing because that's the direction they want to go because it allows, you know, more or closer to actual, like, you know, what's out there currently. I was just, mm -hmm. I, I got an email notification the other day that Font Awesome 6 is out now. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man, I wish uh, Portal could use that. <laughs> I think we're on Font Awesome 3, right? And, no, and it's, it's four. It's four seven. Four, four, four seven. seven. Okay, yeah. cool. But you know, it, it's just one of those things where, and this is why. So, uh, according to John, I don't buy computer books because uh, you know the moment you buy it, it's out of date, and so I, I don't want to have all these books where if I look at them, they're like four, four versions out or ten versions out. You know, so yeah. I don't like to buy books. I like to read online because that stuff's usually kept up to date. You know. But yeah. uh, that's what's nice about this now UI stuff or UIB is it allows you, you know, like you said in one of our videos before, you can bring in packages or whatever mm -hmm. of current um, libraries, right? And so I, I do see this as the direction. I mean, obviously, you can't cut out Portal yet. There's still, mm -hmm. you know, a huge amount of usage there and probably some life for years left on it. But mm -hmm. I do see that's the way where it's going and, and yeah, we could spend many episodes <laughs> probably going through it and developing on it. So <laughs> sorry totally. if we want to do it another time. Yeah, no, I, I thought, I thought this was good. I think I uh, hopefully it gave a couple things, right? Like where to find release notes, a developer instance, you know, digging through release notes, a little bit about deltas, Paying talk to our to thoughts. Release notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> knowing that even though this is like a release preview, it's still not, you know, there, it's still a preview. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I had fun and oh, we had someone, yeah. uh, someone joined us as well. So that was really cool. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't that Ashutosh, I think? Because like AM, I thought I was like, oh, maybe it's him. <laughs> maybe, yeah, yeah. So, cool. Yeah. Um, well, if you liked it, um, you know, please subscribe and, and, and we'll continue to have these. And maybe we'll, John and I will even get a schedule going. <laughs> so, uh, well, now that, that's, that's, that's such consulting life, though, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, cool. Well, well, thanks again, everyone. Thank you, guys. See ya.